These and other channel supporters make my videos possible. Hi, I'm Justin D. Morgan, and you've found my Cheap PC Challenge 2023 official entry video. The Cheap PC Challenge is an event held every year by Tech Ambrosia. Part of the challenge is to source whatever parts you can find under the set budget. In this year's contest, the budget of $100 US or local currency equivalent was supposed to go towards the CPU, motherboard, GPU, and RAM. All other parts could be pulled from your personal stashes or bought wherever. In addition, points are awarded for how far you are under budget and unlike some challenges where you're disqualified for going over, points are subtracted for going over. But fortunately, I've managed to stay under budget. Also, all the builds have to run three benchmarks, which I'll get to later in the video. But for now, let's go through the parts that I've selected for my build, then I'm going to build it. And then while I'm installing the software for running the benchmarks, I'll go over what those are. So buckle up, it's time for my Cheap PC Challenge 2023 entry, which, given my history with eBay purchases and the fact that I've bought all the parts from eBay, I have dubbed this build Potential Regrets 2023. I'm here to celebrate the uh, 30th anniversary of Doom. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, no, you know, it's, it's funny you true. say that because I think the item in this box could be played up, used to play Doom. Mm. Maybe. I'm, I'm going to start playing Doom in VR in a few minutes. Oh, my gosh. I thought it was a box of uh, snacks. Dog snacks. That's where I get all my <laughs> snacks from. Or, well, that's yeah, where yeah, gets yes. That's where Missy gets all my snacks from. After Sleepy that disappointing snacks. donut, I, I'm i switching to, yeah. That's my new band name, Disappointing Donut. You got a real, real, uh, <laughs> is that a 3080? <laughs> I wish. Okay, if this is a 3080, then uh, I don't think I can say I regret eBay for the rest of the year. <laughs> or next year. Or next year. They sent you the wrong thing. Oh, now you better send it back. Yeah. So what is it? Not honesty is the best policy, man. I would have to return it. I, I I don't think I would be able to accept such a nice. Oh no, it should just be like a. <laughs> hey, that's a that's a that's a thirty eighty. <laughs> I mean a three point oh eight oh. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's actually a. Uh... Um, RX R R9 390, mm -hmm. so like definitely not a 380. Still, yeah. that's he's still my favorite droid on Star Wars, so it's still, <laughs> yeah, that's about 2,000 less. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think actually it's like um 20, 20, uh, 26 90 less, if my math is right. <laughs> and and just don't expect it to do ray tracing because all i can do is trace the outlines of people named ray yeah <laughs> all jokes aside this r9 390 is over eight years old and given what i saw on my r9 380x that i bought for a previous attempted build I'm going to go ahead and repaste this GPU using some nice Arctic MX6 thermal paste. I'm going to zoom through this because this isn't intended to be a how-to video on how to repaste your GPU. But if that's something you would be interested in watching, please leave a comment because I have all this footage and would be more than glad to whip out a video on how to repaste your GPU. Also, given the fact that I paid only $26 for this GPU, might mean this was used for mining, so this repaste was probably a good idea.
This motherboard is a Dell Optiplex 3020 motherboard that was pulled out of service. And now I'm going to put it into service as my cheap PC motherboard. It also included an i5-4570 processor, which will give this computer some much needed power for being able to run the gaming benchmarks because slower processors can't keep up with the R9 390. The RAM I bought is nothing special. It's just three matching sticks of crucial DDR3 RAM, four gigabytes each. Unfortunately, because the Optiplex 3020 motherboard has only two slots, I'll only be able to use two of these three modules. Now it's time to install the RAM. so that we can get on with the build of my cheap PC challenge system. Because I'm not using this system in a Dell Optiplex case, I do need to install some adapters for the power as well as the front panel headers so that this computer will not give me excessive error messages on post. And now I've discovered one problem with this motherboard in that the backplate on the GPU is conflicting with the ejection mechanism of those DDR slots. So here I'm about to do a custom modification to this motherboard. Since it's an Optiplex 3020 motherboard, it's nothing special and I don't mind taking the risk. And then it's on making sure that I have power onto the GPU. I'm using a power supply that has the PCIe power connectors. And as a note of caution, don't use the stock Optiplex power supply if you're installing a graphics card that draws more than 35 watts of power. All right, now I'm going to go through the BIOS settings just to document how I've set this up to boot Windows. I don't need to move the boot options right now, but I do need to enable UEFI because I want to install Windows in UEFI mode. And I'm just checking some of these settings, reading the meaning of this one, and I decided I should set that to never. While I install the software needed to run these benchmarks, let's talk about which benchmarks are required for this year's Cheap PC Challenge. And those are the Passmark Performance Test version 9, CPU Mark, the Lost Planet Performance Test, Caves section using the default settings, and the Google Octane 2.0 benchmark using whatever browser the system will run that's modern enough to run the benchmark. Also, for being under budget, I get 10 points per dollar that I'm under budget which I'll go ahead and compute now as 580.1 points for being $58.01 under budget. If I had been over budget, the penalty is 10 points per dollar. Fortunately, that was not the case here. So as you can see, I installed the AMD Adrenaline drivers. Now I'm installing the benchmarks and then I'll grab Google Chrome to run the Octane benchmark. I have decided to run these benchmarks and show them as the actual runtime instead of abbreviating the sequence because I thought it was important to be able to show the benchmarks running for full transparency. So first up is the Passmark Performance Test version 9 CPU mark. And it does take a little bit of time to run all of its various component parts. but we will have a benchmark score shortly. As you can see, this benchmark runs the integer math test, a floating point math test, a prime number test, the extended instructions or SSE benchmark, a compression benchmark, an encryption benchmark, 
a physics benchmark, a sorting benchmark. Oh boy, do we love that in programming. And then a CPU single thread benchmark. And then it's going to combine all of those scores together to come up with a composite score. And that composite score is what counts for this challenge. And the score is... Drum roll, please. Any day now. 7847. So that's going to be 78.47 points towards my cheap PC challenge score. Next up is the Lost Planet performance test using default settings. And it's the caves section here that counts towards the benchmark. On previous build attempts, this benchmark showed signs that the GPU was being throttled by the CPU as the CPU couldn't keep up with issuing instructions to the GPU. But it appears as if on this system, the GPU or rather the CPU is able to keep up with the GPU. And while my frames per second dipped there while all those aliens were flying around, it's going to pick back up towards the end of the benchmark for an average frames per second during the cave section of 184. Therefore, that's 184 points towards my cheap PC challenge scorecard. And finally, we have the Google Octane 2.0 benchmark, which is a JavaScript benchmark that runs in any web browser. For the purposes of this challenge, you need to run a web browser that's modern enough to run this test. I don't know what the starting point is for compatibility. I have chosen the latest version of Google Chrome because the JavaScript performance in, in Google Chrome is better than in Firefox. In reality, though, I prefer Firefox over Chrome because I don't trust Google. And my Octane score is 44,994, which will allow 44.99 points towards my scorecard. Awesome. All right, let's tally the scorecard. For pass mark, I get 78.47 points. For Lost Planet Performance Test, I get 184 points. For Google Octane 2.0, I get 44.99 points. And for being under budget, I get 580.1 points for a total score of 887.56, subject to Tech Ambrosia verifying my calculations. Will it DOS? That is the question. All right, first up for Will it DOS is DOS 3.31. But before I can boot DOS, I need to change a few settings in the BIOS because DOS will definitely not boot in UEFI mode. And DOS will definitely not work if I don't change the SATA port configuration. As you can see, I have put a spinning hard drive in the system because I don't want to format my Windows installation but you'll see that I have turned legacy boot on. I've set the boot order to diskette drive first and CD-ROM second, followed by the hard drive. I wanted to make sure I have legacy option ROMs enabled. You need to set SATA operation to ATA. Otherwise, there's no hope of DOS seeing any hard drives. And I was just about to save and exit when I realized I need to make sure USB is set to enable boot support. Because here we go, it's time to see if this computer will boot DOS 3.31 from a three and a half inch floppy. 
It's possible earlier versions of DOS might be out there that were retail versions that support three and a half inch floppies, but 3.31 is the earliest version I could find on WinWorld PC that wasn't an OEM specific release because some of those early DOS OEM releases only run on the system they were designed for because DOS compatibility was hit or miss back in the early days. And there you go, you saw this version of DOS boot in real time. And as you can see, this is MS-DOS 3.31, booting from a three and a half inch floppy drive, a USB three and a half inch floppy drive. We'll do a directory of the floppy drive just to show that yes, DOS thinks it's a normal floppy drive. I will caution you though, at least on this Dell computer, the B drive is the A drive. During a live stream where I tested this, I formatted my boot disk when I realized the B drive wasn't the hard drive. It was the floppy drive. Anyways, I'm running F disk here to create a partition. I'm going to go ahead and let DOS create the maximum size partition because I totally expect that F disk will do the right thing. I don't wanna to have to calculate how many cylinders is in a compatible partition. So we're gonna reboot so that I can format the disk. Once again, this computer might be fast, but MS-DOS booting from a floppy is not. I would have played Think However, Sony Pictures is more protective of their copyrights than they were of protecting PlayStation Network back when Portal 2 was released. I still really haven't forgiven them for that because I bought Portal 2 on pre-order and couldn't play it for the first several weeks of the game's release. Thank you, Sony. Now I'm going to try to format the C drive. And apparently, the C drive was created improperly by FDisk. So I'm gonna go in and check just to see that I do have a partition. Sure enough, I do. It's a 1,022 cylinders long. I have a feeling with the geometry of this drive, that is not correct. No, it does not DOS. Unfortunately, F-Disk doing the wrong thing means DOS 3.31 is not compatible with this computer. All right, now I'm going to try MS-DOS 6.22 from an original set of installed disks. Yes, these are vintage installed disks and they still work today and I'm going to install from them. Because unfortunately, since this computer doesn't have a floppy drive controller on it, I can't use a GoTech. So therefore, I have to use actual floppy disks. And I don't have enough good floppy disks laying around to create a set of three disks, so original media it is. Fortunately, DOS 6.22 actually gives us a message that it's starting, so we don't have to wonder if the flashing cursor means it's locked up. Also, since this is the install media set, it's going to go into setup. But I want to go into FDisk first and recreate that partition because I suspect it's wrong. There we go. I go to delete it and sure enough, it's an eight gigabyte partition. Certainly not compatible with DOS 3.31 let alone DOS 6.22. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new partition. Once again, I'm going to let FDisk do what it wants to do to see if it does the correct thing. So now we have to restart the computer so that I can format the partition. Once again, wish I could put the think music from Jeopardy here. Instead, I'll just have to do something else while we wait for this computer to boot. Yes, remember in, back when 
Computers were this slow, and we just learned to live with it. Nowadays, this is maddening. This certainly wouldn't make a good short for YouTube. I think it's too long. All right, once again, it's automatically going into setup. I'm going to exit and format the hard drive, assuming the partition was created correctly. And it looks like it was. So I'm going to zoom right through the formatting because it did take a little bit of time being an actual spinning hard drive. For volume label, I was just about to do something boring, like call it Dell. And then I realized, no, this is the cheap PC challenge. So I should call this cheap 2023. How appropriate. And now I'm going to go into DOS setup. We'll zoom right through this because you've probably seen this many times. While we're waiting for DOS to install, I think you should smash that like button and subscribe and turn on notifications so that you'll know when I release my next video. And if you have any ideas of things I could do with DOS 6.22 on this computer, leave a comment and maybe I'll try them out. Yes, it DOSes. All right, off camera, I have pulled the hard drive from this computer and copied DOS Bench using another computer. First up, the Superscape VGA Benchmark. Six hundred and ninety seven point six frames per second. Chris's 3D benchmark. Will not run on this computer. Oh, well, it's just a spinning cube anyways. And I tried to run the PC player benchmark. It also won't run on this computer. Now for Doom. It doesn't look like it's running very fast but it is running incredibly fast because it starts off sluggishly at the beginning for some reason. Sure enough, 2134 game ticks and 474 real ticks. I'll put what that is in frames per second on the screen. And now of course we have to run the Quake time demo. Blink and you miss it. Wow, that performance blew my head off. I could be funny sometimes. And just so you can see, the CPU identification utility does see this as a Haswell generation processor. Now I'm going to try to play a few games. First up, Planet X3. Now, unfortunately, with all of these games, the only sound option available on this computer is PC speaker. And I don't have a PC speaker hooked up, so we have no sound. But as we can see, Planet X3 runs properly on this computer. It is a bit overkill to actually run it within DOS on a computer like this, but I'm just showing that yes, games can run on a computer like this in DOS. I don't see any graphical issues, which is good. I wish I could say that about all of the games I've chosen. And this game is running at the proper speed, so at least a game like this, the fast processor speed hasn't thrown it off. All right, that's enough Planet X3. Let's go on to some actual games that you might actually want to run in DOS. So next up, I have Chex Quest. Chex Quest does not have an option for PC speaker sound. And because I don't have a sound card installed that's compatible with DOS games, as I know the built-in sound is not going to have Sound Blaster compatibility, I do need to go into the game setup and set no sound. Oh, it looks like I could have set PC speaker there. Might have to try that later when I get a PC speaker for this motherboard. 
I was too lazy to pull it out of the Optiplex case because it's stuck in fairly well. But anyways, as you can see, Chex Quest is playing fairly smoothly. So I'll give it a few minutes of gameplay just to see how long I can last without being able to hear any of the enemies. Since Chex Quest is built on the Doom engine, it's playing very nicely. So that does go to show that if I actually played Doom on this computer, it would be an acceptable performance. Yes, I forgot which keys are which on this game, but there we go. At least I figured it out before I lost over half of my health. Yes, want to make sure we zorch these enemies before they get to me. Pick up a little extra health there. Oh, no, wait, that was a Zorch recharge. I have to say, looking back on this, Chex Quest is kind of stingy with the refills. Also, I've played this fairly recently, so I do remember where some of the enemies are, but not being able to hear them does not help much. There we go. Ooh, my health is getting low see here. Oh, there we go. Some slime repellent. What I really need to do is find some food. Oh, there we go. <laughs> well, that only recharged the health by 11%, so I'm probably not going to last much longer in this game. Oh, there we go. Water gives you 1% health. Plate of food gives you 10%. The slime repellent's only 1% armor. The Zorch recharges are only plus one Zorches. Kind of stingy this game is. I'm actually surprised I've lasted this long. Oh, there we go. That's it. All right, that's enough of Chex Quest. Let's go on to the next game. The next game I've decided to try to play is Dune. Just as soon as I remember what the command is to actually run the game. So far, so good. Except it seems like the game is running way too fast. Oh, wow. This is definitely running way too fast. I am not advancing the game. It is running this fast on its own. It looks like this game is going to be unplayable on such a fast system. And I've also realized that I don't have a mouse driver installed. I can't seem to find any keys that control the game, quite possibly because this is a mouse controlled game. So I have no choice but to do the three finger salute. Sorry, Dune, you're not compatible with this system. So if you want to play Dune, you need a much slower computer. Also notice the mouse cursor flickering. Yes, entirely too fast of a system. Fortunately, a reboot doesn't take too long because we're booting off a hard drive. So finally, I'm going to try the Need for Speed demo because I remember playing that back in the day, back in the day. So I do need to run it with the no sound mode. And I'm only seeing the top left corner of the screen. Interesting. Well, maybe it'll... F no, it's not going to fix itself. Well, it looks like this game is incompatible with the graphics card 
because it is not drawing things on the screen properly, but at least I can figure out how to exit the game and get back to DOS. So that's going to be it for the games. And that's it for my Cheap PC Challenge 2023 entry. If you've liked what you've seen, please consider liking this video. And if you'd like to see more content like this, please subscribe and turn on notifications because you don't want to count on that YouTube algorithm to tell you when I upload new videos or do new live streams. And if you think of something else I should do with this PC, leave a comment. I don't care how crazy or silly it is, I might just do it in the future. And with that, I hope you all have a great 2024. Take care and God bless. These and other channel supporters make my videos possible. Wow, that performance blew my head off.